Hello everyone, welcome Hello. to And Away Jamaica, where we connect Jamaica with the diaspora. It's Robert Taylor of Taylor Law, Jamaica, and my co-host, Paulette Price of Red Roof Properties. With us today, we have a guest, a very special guest, Melody. And Melody is here to share with us an experience she had while renting her Airbnb property in Jamaica. We think the sharing of this experience is very important because it will bring out some of the issues that landlords have in respect of tenancies and the eviction of tenants and the peculiarities with the landlord and tenancy law in Jamaica. And it's something and issues that occur time and time again. So I think this case study that Melody will share with us is a very good opportunity for us to understand some of the concerns that persons listening may have and can serve as some guidance going forward. If you are a landlord and you have a tenant or if you're a tenant and you're facing uh, concerns about eviction by a landlord, Melody, welcome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melody McFarlane. I live in New York. Um, I I migrated about 21 years ago. um, And my intention of um, retirement is I would get um, someplace in Jamaica uh, where I could retire when I reached the, you know, required age. So um, I bought two properties, I bought one in Ochi and one in Kingston. And when I bought the one in Kingston, I bought it with the intention, of course, that's where I'll be um, spending most of my time when I come to Jamaica for vacations. Um, and Kingston, that's where I, that's where I would base, because that's where I live and go to other parts of the country. So when I first, when, so I got that property around three years ago. I also have a mortgage on the property, so I said while I, you know, the property is there and paying mortgage, I could also have it make some money for me, which the Airbnb market comes in. So I bought this place that was gutted. I totally renovated the apartment. It's a one bedroom um, in half a tree, like in the middle of half a tree, very central to everything. So um, there was this gentleman in the complex who also had uh, air, an Airbnb property that he was um, running. So he approached me and asked me, what's my plan? Um, I told him what I decide, you know, what I decided to do and I wanted to do it myself from here. So he said, you know, you know, asked me if he could do it because he is living there and it's much easier for him. Um, and so on. So I thought about it. I spoke with my husband and we decided to let him do it so we rent we lease him the apartment just for a flat rate i didn't have him run the airbnb because it was going to be too difficult so i leased him the apartment so at least i could get some help with paying the mortgage monthly and um when i first leased him the first rent was okay then he started um then about a month or so he started being late I have to call him like every month. Um, he skipped some months. He came up with his own plan of how he wants to pay the the rent. He wants to pay, you know, like he wants to make a um, um, 
a deposit like three months before so that he doesn't have to worry about monthly rent. So I said, you know, okay. Then he, um, he does not pay. He did not pay with the, the lump sum that he planned to. He paid at the end of three months, which I said, you know, I don't think, I think this guy is trying to take me for, you know, for a fool. So I, at the end of the lease, I told him I'm not going to renew the lease because I want the property. And the, the first thing he said to me was, no, I can't get back the property. This was last year. The lease was up since last year, July. He said, no, what are you talking about? You can't get back the property. I just established my business and it's not going to work like that. Um, really? I approached him several times and... I, during that time, I could have gotten a lawyer, but I wasn't really in tune really to what I thought, you know, he, he, he does not live there. So I figured it would not be a problem for me to come back and take my property. So anyway, um, I got a, a, a lawyer to give him an eviction notice. I couldn't do it that last year because I had something going on here. So I didn't have the money to do it then. So in February of this year, he was served. I got a lawyer and he was served the eviction um, notice. By the end of March, nothing. I heard nothing from him. I approached him again. He said, um, no, you can't, can't get the place because, you know, his business and, and uh, you know, a whole bag of excuses and, 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 and so on. Why do I want the place? I said, I want my place. I, I, you, you were giving me problems because even when I want to come and I would say to him, Can, um, I need, you have to give, like in my lease, I have three months in advance. I would give him notice that I am coming for vacation. And then I would let him know that. And then he would say, oh no, you can't come at that time because I have guests or so on. So it was being, you know, becoming bothersome. So I said, I'd rather have my place lock up. He said, no, you can't do that. You have to have the place make money. You, you can't do that and you can't get that. And if you want to do it the, the easy way, you know, you can go my way or if you wanted to do it the hard way, we can go to Sutton Street Court. Okay. Well, I didn't really understand, you know, much of what that was. But I, 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 I um, asked around and everybody giving you different stories and so on. So anyway, my husband, mad, he said, I'm going out and I'm going to change the lock. So um, he bought the lock, and uh, this is a lock that you buy where you have to take off the whole door if you want to change the lock. So he told him in advance that he'll come into Jamaica, and that's where he's staying. He's given him his notice, and that's where he will be staying. My husband arrived in Jamaica last week, Monday. Last week, Sunday. Went over to the apartment. He saw him. My husband told him, you know, I'm here now. He told my husband he cannot get into the apartment. He has an Airbnb, another Airbnb he can put up my husband in. So my husband said, no, that's not going to work. This is my, uh, my place. This is where I come to stay, and this is where I'm staying. He said, you can't stay here. I have somebody in there, and, um, and, um, and that's it. So he left, so my husband got the locksmith and changed the lock. And then everything started going downhill after that. When he arrived home, that's the tenant, um, he saw that the lock was changed. He called the police. Police came over. Police told my husband, um, you are not supposed to do that. And he was wrong and blah, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So my husband said, okay, I'm, I know I'm in the wrong. Well, he can take me to court. If I am in the wrong, he can take me to court for me to give him back his property since he claimed that it's his property. So my husband said, I'm not giving up the key. So this was Monday. He, the same instance, he threatened um, my husband. It, it was like in front of the police that he was going to shoot him. He also has a licensed firearm. Threatened my husband that he was going to shoot him um, if he doesn't get back the property. And... The police, he said, just left. They said, you know, they have other issues to go deal with, so they just left. So my husband went and reported it to Alfred Tree Police Station. Um, the different set of police um, went up to the apartment and 
warn him and told him not to go near the, the, the property. If he has an issue, he must take it up with the court. He can sue him and take it up with the court. That was that. So my husband went to our other um, place in Ochi and he spent some time down there. Came back up later on in the week, about Thursday, Friday. Police again. There were more police. Um, I think my, when my husband was just uh, arrived and went into the complex, he heard him said, oh, you're here. And one phone call and then there was police again. Police. So <clears throat> the police came and told him that you know, he, he, what he did was wrong again. My husband said, yes, I know. You told me several times that what I did was wrong. So he must take the next step now in taking me to court. No, you have to take him to court. And they were going out. My husband was not going to have it. So he went inside and he closed the door and that was that. Then um, about Friday, Friday, my husband got a call from the rent board and they told him that what he did was wrong. He should never have changed the lock. My husband said this man lease was up from last year. He got an eviction notice. We, he, we expressed the desire to get back the apartment. And he refused to give it up. They would not hear it. They said, that's not how it goes. Once you're renting the place, whether he lives there or not, it's his. And you have to take him to court if that's the case. So my husband said, I'm not giving him the key. I also called. I got the number from my husband. I called the rent board. They would not hear me either. All they're saying is that it was wrong. And I, have, I break, broke the law. And I have to give him back the key. So that was that. It was Friday afternoon at 10 o'clock, around 10 o'clock in the night, Jamaican time. My husband um, called me and said the police come to arrest him. And they said they got a letter from the rent board. This is that in the night, the only rent board opened that late. It was in the night that they got the letter and they brought my husband down to the station. And he went down there. They said they just put him down to put him to sit. And then the person who brought him in, they they left him, and nobody in the station know what to do. It's like they're saying, "What do we do now?" So anyway, he was released. And then Saturday, because he is supposed to come back to the U.S. on Sunday, and then on Saturday he went back up to the um, up to the apartment. And then on Saturday, they, 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 no, before that, they told him that he's, they're coming for the key Saturday morning. So my husband already left. He said, I'm not giving you the key. He left and he went somewhere. So when they, they called him on his phone and said, there's a warrant out for your arrest. Um, and you must turn yourself in, something like that. So he said he went back up to the apartment. Somebody called, somebody called him and told him that the guy, the renter, the guy who we rented the place to was taking off the lock. So my husband went over there, saw him digging off the lock, called the police. The police came again. It was Saturday afternoon. The police came and the police took my husband down to the station. So he said, okay. Um, and when he was in the car, he heard um, someone, the dispatch, um, said, did you get the person? I said, yes, I have the suspect. And the person said, is it McFarlane? He said, no, he's, it's, that's not the, the suspect. That the person who he called, he said, no, it's okay. This is a suspect. And they hung up. So I said, okay. Um, they brought him down to the station, put him to sit again. Nobody said anything. And then in the night, no, they said they wanted to charge him. And, um, and they said they have to lock him up because he, they get from the rent board that he breached the rent board by changing the lock. And, um, and they got a, an order from the superintendent to lock him up. So he has to be locked up. Or if, he, if not, he has to give over the key. This was Saturday night, like after 10, 11 o'clock at night. So my husband having to come back up to the state because he has his work to do, come back up to the state. So he, um, they talked him to give them back the key. So they called the guy. And he came and they gave him the key and he made a promise that um, he is what? I think he's going to um, give him the eviction notice. I think when I called my husband, they were still talking, telling him what to do. 
give him the eviction notice and then if he does not leave, he has to give him like two months consecutive um, eviction notice. And if he doesn't leave, then he has to go and file um, court papers for him to get out. And, and my husband came up and that's the story. Wow. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it, it's, I mean, very heartbreaking just, just listening to the story and knowing how you and particularly your husband must have been traumatized by the experience. Yes. But unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> um, the, steps, the steps he took are well settled in law as being um, inconsistent with the course of law. And so a breach, this, this whole situation, I mean, this would make a case study for law school. Uh, yeah. Tenancy in Jamaica is, is covered by the Rent Restriction Act. And, you know, any breach of the act is, you know, exposes to the, to the person who has breached the act to 12 months imprisonment. That, that's how strict the act is. And we have to remember that the Rent Restriction Act was, it's a very old act, and most rent acts around the world have a tendency to favor the tenant because landlords are generally seen as persons of the capital class. They own several properties and the, the state has a, an interest in protecting the welfare of someone who's in possession of someone's property so that they're not made homeless. So, so the laws tended to be, be drafted and written and the state has always had this welfare interest in protecting the tenant. So that's, I think, the first recognition is that the weight of support is in favor of the tenant and not the landlord. Also, the law, you know, has evolved in a very, not peculiar way, but, you know, there are certain interests in land that persons have. You have a freehold and you have a leasehold interest. And what you know, we need to recognize is that when you have a freehold interest, which is when you own that title to the property and your name is on the registered title, you have what we call the, the freehold interest. If you rent your property to someone, that person now has a leasehold interest. In law, the leasehold interest is as equal as the freehold interest. So when you transfer your interest by way of lease to a tenant, you have given up or suspended your rights or interest in that property until that property, until that lease is terminated. So all through that period where he's putting other occupiers in your property, you no longer in law own that property. You've suspended those rights and you have no rights until you regain possession and then the law creates certain um, steps for you to regain possession. So first of all, let me start from the beginning. Wrong agreement for the type of arrangement that you want to put in place. So you own property. The last thing you want to do is to create a lease because a lease has so many tentacles to protect the tenant and keep you and deprive you of enforcing what you may see as your right. So if you have an investment property and you are, as is very typical, uh, not just in Jamaica, but overseas, persons will buy property and they'll say, you know, I want to live in there, kind of like a timeshare arrangement. I want to live in the property for, I want to stay in the property for three or four weeks of the year. I'll rent it out Airbnb, you know, long-term rental doesn't suit me because I can't have intermittent possession. So I'm going to do short-term rental, whether it's home away from, whether it's um, any of these um, platforms that do short-term rentals, Airbnb is one. Um, in fact, I think um, home away from home is one. Booking.com. Um, booking, booking. 
booking, bookings.com. Mm -hmm. Now, when you use those platforms, really what you needed in this instance was not a tenant. You needed a property manager. So you should have entered into an agreement with this person by way of a management agreement to rent your property. So, you know, if I had met you then, I would have said to you, uh, Melody, no, 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 no. Don't lease your property to this gentleman because if there is any disagreement, you are going to have to go through a very cumbersome and wieldy process to regain possession. So what you want is to retain possession, enter into a property management agreement, an agreement where he agrees to rent your property to short-term renters by way of Airbnb, and you will pay him a fee for undertaking that task. So mm -hmm. you'll pay him a fee for giving possession to any person that rents. You'll give him a fee for cleaning the property, and you'll probably give him, give him a share of any income that you receive. When that person goes on and on the Airbnb, they're actually entering into a rental agreement with you, not him. Mm. And even if they were to enter into an agreement with him, you still have an agreement with him that declares and makes it quite clear that he is not in possession as a tenant. It's merely either as a licensee, which doesn't give him the same level or priority of rights as a tenant. So that's how, if you and I had that discussion as an attorney client, and I said, no, we need a management agreement. Don't give him any tenancy. No, um, horse gone through the gate. So yeah, yes. you now have a tenancy in the yeah. yeah. So as I said before, and, and, and how I started my response to you was that tenancy is a very tight agreement for a tenant, not for the landlord. It's weighted very, very heavily in favor of the tenant. So under the Rent Restri Restriction Act, Section 25 lists about five reasons um, and lists the basis on which you can evict a tenant. So even where you have a tenancy that expires so you may have a 12 month lease and that lease expires after 12 months. In law, that person can hold over on a monthly tenancy. And so where that person holds over on a monthly tenancy, you in effect are creating a perpetual tenancy. And so to break that chain of perpetual occupation, you need to issue notice. So the first thing you have to do is issue what they call a Section 25 notice. In that notice, you have to give a reason. And the reason has to be one of the reasons A through G in the Act, nothing else. And so non-payment of rent, you need the premises for your own use, you need the premises for uh, a dependent of yours, or you need to do repairs to the premises. You have to list one of those reasons. Having Prepare that notice. You have to make sure that the notice is properly served. So the tenant has to receive the notice. It has to be physically placed in their hand or they must have knowledge that that notice was served. The person serving it also has to note on the copy how it was served. So in our office, we use a professional process server so that person has experience and knows how to serve that notice. Once a notice is served, that notice must give that person 30 days as at the end of the rental period. So if you serve the notice at the 15th of July, the month or 30 day notice period doesn't start till the 1st of August. So not until the 1st of September will that notice expire. If that notice expires, where you have a recalcitrant tenant, as you clearly have in this case, somebody who is uncooperative, it is always likely that that person 
will not vacate. You have to go to court. You go to court, a judge is going to want to know, you may get a hearing date 30 days, 60, 90 days after. And once that person is served and you go to court, the court will say, the court will want to know the circumstances. Now in this instance, it's clearly not a case where you have a family with children and the courts may feel that you're displacing a family. Clearly this is a business arrangement, arrangement and it would, in the court's view, not be your typical case of, of, of social welfare where you're putting somebody out and that this person is just being difficult. And so it's very likely the court would issue an order for this tenant to vacate. But that's not where it ends. Because if the tenant doesn't voluntarily vacate the premises, you must retain a court order. And so once you get the court order for eviction, person fails to come out, then you retain a bailiff. And the bailiff now has the wherewithal to take the lock off. It's the only person who can take the locks off and only after a court order is in place, take those locks off and then forcibly remove the person. So if the person has contents, furniture, fixtures, fitting, remove it. If that person becomes uncooperative and the police comes, you have your court order. In fact, the bailiff won't act without the court order. Then it is a tenant that is on the wrong side of the law and not your husband because the acts and the steps that your husband took puts him as a trespasser because that property is in law not his his rights and interest in that property have been suspended until the law says he can legally take possession he did not take the steps to retake possession so in law he's just a third party out there harassing a tenant and, and that's how the law is structured. And so, you know, <laughs> I in a nutshell, very unfortunate case. Very but, unfortunate, boy. You know, if only I'd known. You know, ideally, ideally, your husband should have probably got some legal advice the moment he got there and there was resistance and there was a conflict because, you know, you don't want these things, particularly in Jamaica, where you just need to say, boo these con conflicts escalate and, yes. and, 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 you know, in, 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 with consequences that we don't want, right. you know. So, um, Paul, I've said quite a bit. I'm sure you want an opportunity. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm edging on my seat. Um, welcome, Melody. Um, <laughs> obviously, Melody, we know each other and, um, as soon as I'd heard the story, I was like, got it. And I, I think I'd said at the time, um, I wish I'd known that your husband was going to do that. Because if I'd known that, because I spoke to him on another matter uh, a day or so before, I would have told him not to do it because it will always go against you, although it is your property. So what I would like to ask Robert from a legal point of view, because it's already happened, the horse has already bolted, how can we lift this situation? Um, I'm really happy to hear that there is a different type of agreement because that I didn't know. Yeah, I did. yeah, I'm glad to yeah, know that. I certainly will tell my clients that because I get a lot of clients who always ask me about Airbnb and I always just say to them, look, it's a lot more work. Um, it's not my area. But if you're going to do it, you have to be prepared to do a lot of work. But if I had realized that there was another type of agreement that should be in place, that would have been number one on my list as advice. So we've now seen that the law really acts more for the tenant, but how does, what, I mean, it seems like the landlord also needs to be protected, Robert. So how, how can the landlord, apart from the right agreement, but how, what else does the landlord need to do to be protected because this is how this happens quite a lot not even with airbnb apartments because i'm sometimes in a situation where i have a property to sell and the tenants will tell you 
I'm not letting anybody in here to view. They will also, if people try to just do a drive-by, will try to tell them that things go wrong with this property when it's not true. So they will spend their time trying to um, make sure that the sale doesn't go through. So the, the landlord should also have some rights. I think it needs to be a bit more balanced. What do we do? What, do you, what would you say to us, Robert? What would you say to us to do? Yeah, Paul, so yes, you know, this situation and the circumstance that unfolded with Melody is common. Um, even in longer term rentals, as you and I know, in a yes. lot of our sales, when the sale is completed, we have issues with having the tenant evicted and the case law is replete with, with, with cases. And, you know, um, so the law has evolved in terms of convention and how do you manage these circumstances. So I think the first thing is the landlord needs to be apprised of the law. And, and clearly, uh, yes. you know, advised that the law weighs in, in favor of the tenant. And so the first thing is screening your tenants. Melody seems to have a, a professional rogue um, in, 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 in her case, someone who knows the law and um, used it to his advantage, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sadly. So you, you, you need to screen your tenants, and that's where I, I think realtors come in. It has become more common now. I've seen where rent, rent, realtors don't take the first tenant. They take a list of persons, and they'll do credit checks. They'll call referrals and so on to make sure that the person is of a particular temperament that you know, won't necessarily result in a confrontation when the lease is, is terminated. What we try to do in our practice when we get a sale and we've started drafting the agreement for sale and there's a tenant in possession, we ask the, the landlord or owner, um, who's in possession? Is it a relative? Sometimes relatives can cause even more issues. Yes. And we ask that the notice be, be, be sent very early. And it's also a very tricky situation because the landlord we're not quite sure when we're going to close. It could be 90 days. It could be 120 days, but they don't want to be losing rent. They don't want the tenant to come out too early so that they lose that one or two months rent. But we normally suggest that you give early um, notice to quit. So we generally will prepare a notice to quit. You know, we'll spend a few thousand, four or five thousand dollars, Jamaican dollars to get it properly served. Um, by a process server and we follow up after 30 days and we continue to follow up and where we see clearly that we're going to have a uh, resistant tenant we we file in court because ultimately uh, that's really our only recourse is through the courts okay. I mean you know there are other other persons who try other you know tacit ways you know um, but ultimately its re remediation is, is, is through the courts. Um, Can I ask a, um, a question? Sure, sure. Okay, even if I, you know, we, I get back this property, I'm not gonna feel comfortable going there. So I plan to sell it because there is no way I'm coming home on vacation and I'm gonna be harassed, I'm not gonna be comfortable. He owns two other properties there that he used to do Airbnb and I you know so do I have a case then because I I told my husband told him that he is going to sell the property and the first thing he said is well you know that I have first choice to buy you can't do something like you can I have first choice something no, like no, that no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> the, 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 the first thing the first thing the first thing you need to do is retain an attorney. Now, in this instance, it doesn't necessarily need to be an, a, a, a conveyance attorney. I think you need a litigator, somebody who goes to court, who somebody can go to Sutton Street and um, advocate on your behalf. I mean, Sutton Street 
is a people's court and you can go. But in this instance, I would advocate getting a, a litigator, somebody who is very comfortable in front of the judge and is not, you know, afraid of, of these kinds of issues. So, And that's what I want. To, and that's what I'm looking. Sorry about that. That's what I want right now. I need so someone. The first thing you need is to give him notice and make sure that notice is properly served. Chances are he's not going to um, respond favorably. And that attorney will, will, will guide and advise you that assuming he doesn't, the stage at which you go before the courts and present the circumstances and share the circumstances. You'll have to get a court order. And when yeah, you get that I, I, court order, okay. you, you, you then retain a bailiff, the attorney, certainly a, a, a litigator will have access to, to a bailiff. And you, you forcibly remove him. Clearly, um, the situation has escalated to the point that you're even expressing fear for your own safety. So it, it is likely you'll have to do and you can do and take all these steps remotely. You, there's no need for you to be in the jurisdiction or be, at the, be present at the property. Have the attorney get the notice served if the person doesn't give up possession, apply for the order, get the bailiff, any, any uh, you know, furniture or anything that, person has in possession, take them out, change the locks, and then at that stage, if you choose to put the property up for sale, do so freely. You have engaged, and hopefully, I don't know what's in the lease, hopefully the lease doesn't give him a first option to no, purchase. It so no, it, it did. no, it didn't. It didn't. So, you know, so, I'm sorry about that. So, I could not put it up for sale now, right? I have to wait first. <laughs> it wouldn't suit you to put it up for sale because we already know ahead of time what's going to happen. So, oh, okay. if you put it up for sale now, chances are the purchaser is going to want a 90-day closing period. It's unlikely, given the history of this tenancy, that you're going to be able to get possession or grant possession to a purchaser in 90 days. Because okay. you're going to need at least a month, month and a half, depending on when the notice is served. So you're going to have to have the month start and end for 30 mm -hmm. days to give notice. Then you're going to have to get, um, you're going to have to determine whether he comes out or not. If he doesn't, then you're going to have to find a, a claim in the small claims court at, at Sutton Street. And then you're going to have to wait for a date. And then you're going to have to have a hearing. So it's unlikely all of that can be done in 90 days. So oh, I don't think... think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to ask a lot. The, the, he has been pressing, and this is from the very first, when he said to take him to Sutton Street. And this is what he has been advocating all along. I have to take him to court. And he can stay in there up to 12 months and pay no money and if I take him to court and a whole bunch of no money. he's just no. and because no, he's, court he's, days he's, are so far apart that's why he's saying this he said you, I am you you can take up to 12 months and I and that's why and you really want me to take him to court that's what he wants because he will no. have time and he said he can still go in and get extension and that's he's, what I don't he's, understand. He's bluffing you. No, you need a lawyer. 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 I know. I know. Don't stop no. speculating. Yes. Get yes. some solid advice. Yeah. You can get a court date. In these circumstances, I don't see the court granting an extension. But you need to, as we say in Jamaica, wheel and come again. Start the process <laughs> right way. Get I an mean, attorney, yeah. file a notice, have no discussion or dialogue with him. Have I the block attorney, him. I have block the attorney him. handle all communication, get you 
calmness, get back your zen, get back calm, <laughs> leave it alone, recognize it's something that is not going to resolve itself right away, but it will resolve itself, but only with you following the right procedure. So step back, do some yoga, do some meditation, mm -hmm. hire an attorney. I like that one, Robert. Let's do their work. <laughs> <laughs> leave them to do their work and yeah. I would say we're in August now almost you know by October November you should have the matter resolved if you don't feel that the tempo or temper has de-escalated and you think you want to sell I'm sure Paulette can guide you there and oh yeah clear you know, based on the location, and I, I think I know where the property is, you yeah. should not have any difficulty. Definitely not. Robert, so, what would happen um, once we've gone through all the procedures, we get him out, and he's damaged the property, say, for example, can you sue for that? Can she sue for lots of earnings? Yes? yes. So, you, so, so you, in your, in your claim for possession, you can also file a claim for unpaid rent. Okay. So all those threats he's making, and if he has assets, these orders can attach to his assets. So get a lawyer. Get a I lawyer will. This Hopefully this is where you come in. Can, hopefully you will be able to help me to get one. Well, I'll speak to Paulette when we, we, we are... Off air, so yes, to speak. So yeah, uh, air, yes. suggest, suggest some options. Robert, suggest some options for you. Robert, okay. I have another question. Thank you. Uh, Robert, I have another question. Um, sometimes we just we continue working with the law, right? Is there any way or do you know of anything where these laws can be will slightly be updated like for example the, the the rent restriction acts when i was learning real estate i was told the last time they had updated the act was 1984 but i understand it's been updated again like in like maybe two or three years ago i'm not even sure of the exact date but it doesn't seem like um it's taken into consideration the modern way of renting anymore like so for example I think that Airbnb, obviously it's a new phenomenon. So things like Airbnb should kind of be mentioned in the act as well, so that people understand what their rights are from there. And we need a little bit more balance. So do you know if that will ever happen? Is, is, are there anything in, is there anything in the pipeline to change us? Are, 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 are we that progressive? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> No, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about um, revisions to the Rent Restriction Act, but, you know, clearly in Jamaica, there are just, just so many priorities and we just seem to move um, not as quickly as, as we could. But what I would say is any revisions don't look for any um, significant loosening of the protection that tenants are provided. Uh, this in the UK... Act, uh, New Zealand, Australia, the Commonwealth, who, who have fairly recent revisions to their acts. This is, is very similar. Um, so don't expect much there. Now, what I would say is that, and we, I think, have some heightened vigilance in Jamaica where this is concerned, is the, the development, so the strata developments, the homeowners' agreements, the developers' by way of the homeowners agreement can put more teeth in, in these kinds of arrangements. In fact, we're finding some developments exclude short-term rental and don't allow. Yes. And, and that's also common in other jurisdictions as well in the, in the U.S. Some condominium associations clearly say um, no short-term rentals, no rentals less than a year or no rentals less than six months. Yes. Uh, so, so you, you have to apprise yourself and arm yourself with an agreement. So if you're going into the Airbnb business and it's something you want to do to supplement your income, then get your hand again through guidance of an attorney 
on a management agreement. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just simply have to, there's so many of these agreements out there because it's so common. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's good. And that is very good for me to know because I, yes. I, 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 you know, and, and the funny thing is, even though this, this guy, you know, want to bad me up most likely that's what he's doing and because i'm overseas so they take advantage more advantage of people who live overseas you know and i want to say to people don't give up don't be afraid because jamaica is my home it has always been my home and i still plan to go back in and i'm not going to be afraid i'm not going back home nor anything yeah i i, I i'm looking forward to going back to Jamaica and that's where I'll be spending the rest of my years. So I just want others do not give up because you know these there's a lot of these people out there and all they're trying to do is to just frighten people because we are up here and um we're not on the ground. But as you said, if we have the right information, the right the right the right lawyer and the right information, we should be okay. Yeah, but it goes right. back, Absolutely. It goes, oh, sorry. It goes back to what we've always been saying, Robert and I have been saying with the, the, the previous programs. It's, it's really important to work with the professionals because there are things that you just don't know. I mean, I don't know it all either because I learned about, I just learned something this morning. But it's all about working with the professional, professionals, knowing what you can and you can't do. And once you know what you can do, your experience now will help others who were who have had that experience and just didn't even know that there was a special type of agreement yeah. that not I, didn't know that. I mean it's gonna just change the face of it, of everything. And once you're armed with your evidence, um of knowledge, sorry, not evidence, knowledge, it would just be such a better place. Um and what, I, what we are going to do as a group as well, we're going to show, because there are people out there that manage other people's properties use, um, as part of their Airbnb um, business, and they do a great job. It's just unfortunate yeah. that you met this guy. Yes. Other people have met some other monsters, I'll call them for now. Yes. Oh. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm happy but not I'm to glad. go the right way. But I'm glad, Melody, that you've said and you've encouraged persons not to be deterred. You know, many persons with, with bad experiences, and that's part of why we have this show, is to guide persons who are relocating either permanently or on a short-term basis to Jamaica. Because, you know, you're, you live in a more developed society, and so the processes and recourse is a lot different and you get used to that and you step back into Jamaica and you assume that the same rules apply. apply um, right. Jamaica has rules. They have rules. We have rules in Jamaica. But, but you know, it's, it's, there are rules that you need to know. And, and even when you migrate to the U.S. or we've had Jamaicans migrate to the U.K., they don't do certain things without getting in the UK a solicitor. In the US, you don't do certain things exactly. without yeah. getting proper guidance. But sometimes, because we feel is home, you know, yes, we drop that's our things. Thing. Yes. 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 That's, that's, don't, not, that's don't exactly drop what guard. happened. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. ever drop your guard. So you move in a new environment, get a referral for a good doctor, a good mechanic, yes. a good lawyer. You know, a good handyman. Yes. Those, you know, surround, get referrals for, you know, the key persons that are going to help make your, your life easier. And yeah. don't make a decision just simply on the first encounter that you have with somebody. So, you know, um, Melody, thank you. Um, you know, thanks for You're sharing welcome. that experience. And notwithstanding oh, yeah. the... The hardship that you you and your your husband has encountered. At least you have a smile on your face. Hopefully oh yeah, we'll give you a, a <laughs> tool book from which yes. you can uh, move forward and resolve the situation. And I hope things subside subside. And if 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 you don't decide, 
to retain the property, um, certainly. But I would just suggest stay where you are, do things remotely, yes. and um, things will things will work out. And mm -hmm. uh, with all as a, as an ally. Uh, and certainly we'll help where we can. Everything will work out. So thanks again. Thank you. Uh, yes, thanks. thanks Melody for sharing. Oh, anytime. I had to get this out, Paulette. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I think it was important for everyone to know what it is. Yes. A lot of people might have stories, but nobody knows it. And I wanted people to know mine. Yes. Yes. So thank you very much, well, Paulette. Thanks. Yes, thank you. And I'm ha really happy that we've been able to offer you some guidance. And yes. it will also help many others listening to this program. So oh, thank yes. You so thank you so, so much. You're very welcome. Bye. Mm -hmm. Until next time. Bye. Oh, la, 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 la,